anyway, uh, so this is a, a basically it's a, it's a play, but it's also a writing class or a chance to get your work done. And um, we what we'll do is we're going to work together for about 20 minutes, and then we will take your questions about your work and your creative process, your work and your creative process. So any question that you have about how to get started, how to finish, how to keep going, how to stop, whatever. We will answer them or at least make a brave attempt to do so. And if you're watching online uh, by way of Howl Round, Caroline's going to tell you how to get in touch with us. So you can tweet your questions to us to the handle at WatchMeWork, SLP, with the hashtag NewPlay and hashtag HowlRound. Okay, well, that's great. Um, today, uh, we're going to use our phones for timers, and I'm going to work on my iPad. Oh. <laughs> my iPad mini. I know that's not a plug. Well, because it's that, it's that place in the project where you got to, you know, employ technology big time. So, I'm going to work on my iPad mini, and we're going to go.
20 seconds that you should not do this. Because, you know, you just shouldn't. You know? So ask the question and then don't expect an answer, really, because... I mean, it's, it depends. Here's your answer. It depends where you want to put your faith. Whose footsteps do you want to follow in? You know, that's maybe, that's a good answer. Whose footsteps do you want to follow in? I want to follow in the footsteps of August Wilson. Today is August Wilson's birthday. I want to follow in the footsteps of August Wilson. Shakespeare, or Bertolt Brecht, or Inzaki Shange, or you name it, you know, you name it, you know, or even living great people, like, you name them, they're all over the place, you know, Afro Fulgarn apparently has a wonderful play out that's signature, and you want to follow in the footsteps of those people, and maybe a doctor wants to follow in the footsteps of great medical people, so it depends whose footsteps you want to follow. Yes, many doctors and lawyers become authors and artists and late in life. And you may become a doctor and lawyer. Or you may go to a lot of doctors and lawyers. <laughs> You're going to go to a lot of doctors and lawyers. But right now, writing is grabbing you. He's just, you know. wants to know, what is the best way to make a dialogue most effective without sounding preachy? Mm, having written much dialogue. <laughs> um, let's see, that's a, good, that's a good question. How to make, Crystal says, asks how to make dialogue sound effective without sounding preachy. Is that, yeah? yeah, make dialogue most effective without sounding preachy. I'm um, guessing, Crystal, that you have something that you want to say, right? You have like a, right? So um, I would suggest, and I suggested this to some people here, get really close in with your character. So when we have something to say, a lot of times we're like this, right? And when you get really close into your character, you're going to be speaking through the mouth of your character. And that way, everything that your character says is deeply embedded in the stakes of your play, for example. And it's not just someone standing at speaker's corner, standing on a soapbox. So if you find, if people say, oh, you sound preachy, you just like talking to me, telling me some point about something, or preaching to the choir or whatever, get closer to your character and to her needs or his needs and wants and desires for any given scene or moment or beat in your play or novel or whatever you're writing. Okay? Um, yes. Yes, because it's a story. I mean, you know, you think of like, um, oh, I don't know, Shakespeare. I like Shakespeare. Um, and you think of, he was like holding a, you know, making a mirror for magistrates. I mean, this is how a king should be. This is how a queen should conduct herself. But you never got the feeling that he was pointing like this because it was so deeply embedded in the character, like Lear, you know? Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be getting in it. Like, it was never like this. It was always deeply embedded in the character. It was very funny. Good question. Good question, by the way. Yeah, see, embedded like Lear or great writers, like you said, it was a reflection of the personal writers, and it reflects the human, the humanness. Lynn's saying that when it's deeply embedded in a character, then it reflects the humanity of the audience. And that's an interesting trick, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting. It's a, it's a, I think it's a, um, a physics or biology or something. Because I think that a character is actually a portal into all of humanity. That's what they're like. And so if you get into the character, you're not getting into just a one person. You're getting into the portal, into the wormhole for all humanity. And that's why it comes out on the other side, speaking, sounding like everybody. Or just more than one person. You know? Yeah, that's good. Yes. 
What's your name? You've been here before. No, I haven't. I've just seen you. Maybe I've just seen you on the street. My twin. Oh, you're twin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when you're starting to work on a play, yes. do you begin with a character and just go from there? Or is there a narrative, a story that you kind of have? What's your name? Sheila. Sheila. Okay, Sheila is wondering um, when we start writing, or when she starts writing, it's about you. I know. Should she start with a character or a story, like a, or a narrative kind of thing? Getting started is hard for me. Getting started is hard. Good. Good, good, good. That's, that's, um, do you enjoy writing more or rewriting more? Just curious. Probably rewriting. Probably rewriting. Uh huh. Because once you got it, once yeah, you got a draft, editing I can handle. Editing you can handle. Initial, the initial thing, right? And painful. So what, it's painful. Like what Hard kind of work? Like what kind of pain? Like, like where do you feel the pain? I'm just curious. Um, you know, I'll. I'll go in one direction and think, no, that's not it, and then I go in another direction. So right. it takes it takes a long time to right. figure out what is it. What is it? But then once you figure it out, once you decide, then you can, you feel more comfortable. I feel more comfortable, but it's still a process. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm still a, you know, emerging writer. Oh, yes. I understand. We're all emerging. We are. We really are. I mean, every, I mean, we're just emerging, you know, like, People. Some of us, right, some of us, like my son, he's three, he's emerging. But then there's a baby who's, you know, so we're all, but, uh, but I, I hear what you're saying. Because we all have questions just like this. I mean, if you've written five plays or ten plays, you might still have the same questions. And we make the mistake of thinking that once I've written 365 plays in 365 days, I'm not going to have these questions anymore. Ha ha, they're wrong. So I still do. I but still it gets have. easier. I uh, no, actually, it doesn't. Have you ever climbed, uh, well, not Everest isn't a good thing to talk about today because all those people died in Nepal, but have you ever climbed a, a really high mountain or, or run, uh, well, climbed a mountain? Okay. Or heard about people who have? I've climbed Kilimanjaro. Really? See? <laughs> You'll have no problems. <laughs> you climbed Kilimanjaro. It was easy. It was easy. Oh was, it, was, it, was it hard to breathe when you got to a certain... No, I was young and I was very fit. But you had to, did you have to, do people have to use oxygen or anything? No. They don't, you just run up there? Well, you hike. You hike. You don't hike. I didn't hike. Well, but some people do. Okay. But I know that when you climb high, maybe higher mountains, or maybe those people who are less fit, but the air is rare, and it's harder to breathe. And so maybe when you write lots of plays, it's, it's very different. The air is rare. It's harder to breathe. Because you've been like... <laughs> like that. So I like that. Um, okay, but anyway, let's do it. Do we start with a character or do we start with a narrative? I would say um, you could do either. You could start with a character and get to know her or him and have her or him take you somewhere. Or you could walk around asking yourself, tell me the story. Tell me the story. What is the story? You know, and you could, you could do, like I suggested before, index cards. And you like write it out on index cards. This happens, and this happens, and this happens, and in the end, this happens. And make it very simple, as if you're telling uh, a young person, a small person, you know, once upon a time, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and in the end, this happened. And that's your first draft. Hmm? See? And you say, so who's the main character of this? Well, her name is, you know, and she did, and this happened to her, and then she did this, and then she did this, and then she did this. You see how we just, so you could start with just a story, a framework, and the framework can be very simple. Okay? Try, to, try that. That might be a good way to do it. Keep it, keep it simple. I know you climbed Kilimanjaro, and you ran up. Is there one approach that you typically would use? Uh, both. Both. I suggest both. I don't know. It depends. It depends. Sometimes things come to you with characters, and sometimes things come to you with story. But they're the same. It's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. Whatever comes. Because this is a story about a woman who, 
You know what I mean? Oh, so there's character already. Eh. You know, this is a story about a town, a group of people who lived in a town who character already. You see what I'm saying? So it's to, to split them apart. You know, just whichever you're feeling. Okay. Congratulations on climbing that mountain. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the sort of the like, back talk of yes. uh, basically the editing yes. part of it. When you have like a bunch of after years of trying to write this story, you have a bunch of not false starts, but different drafts. Yes. How, I guess, how did you approach just trying to pull it all together? Right. Right. Uh, right. That's a really good question. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan. Hi, Ryan. You have a Ryan behind the camera too. So, um, so, so, uh, Ryan says after years of writing many drafts, how do you go about pulling it all together, writing like the draft, right? And it's tricky because if it's a play and say it's like a hundred pages to say, then you've got a hundred pages of this way to do it, a hundred pages of this, and a hundred pages of this, and a hundred pages of this, and a hundred pages of this. It's a lot of draft, right? If it's a novel, it's even worse, right? Okay, so I would suggest, if you've written all those drafts and they're all different, I would suggest not looking at any of them and just going to what we just talked about, telling yourself the story. Once upon a time, this happened and this happened, and try to get really basic with yourself. I think if you're gonna try to go through and find little bits of this draft that you like, little bits of this draft that you like, that sounds really hard. So just kind of start fresh. This is going to be the draft. And do a lot of sketching before you actually commit to dialogue. And you know, you, you know what I'm talking about? Just use your index cards, just have outline, if that's what you call it, you know, right? Get bullet points down. Okay? And do it that way. Yeah, just then just dive into the bullet points and go through that way instead of just picking. And to, and to craft the bullet points, you can look at each one, but don't get too bogged down in these drafts, I would suggest, because that's a lot of drafts. You have it in your head. You, ha you have it. You know, so you just have to kind of go forward like that. Okay, try, try the bullet points. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Or the index card is good. Okay. Okay. Good question. So that's the little game of the show that we do. So my thing is, so what did you write about? Um, I wrote about Eva. You wrote about Eva? I wrote about Eva. Yeah, who's Eva? Eva's this young New Yorker who was waiting for Charles in the mezzanine of the public theater. That's nice. And she was trying to figure out what was going on. That's good. What happens in the end? I didn't get to the end. Oh, what do you think? She doesn't figure it out. She doesn't figure it out? No. What do you mean? She can't figure out what these people are doing. Oh. Why are they here? Oh. <coughs> okay. That's cool. Is that the shape of something? Is that the shape of something? No. That's just... I have to write something. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we sit and we just write. I mean, really, you have to write, you have to write something just to put words down. What did Joyce Carol would say sometimes? I'm going to paraphrase her heart, but let's see. Sometimes uh, when my soul is as thin as a playing card, I write, and the act of writing changes everything. So um, I really admire her, because she can really write. You know, she sits down, and she gets her work done. It's pretty cool. Um, so. They, they set up for you to write. 
I don't know how to turn the question on myself on me. So could you just ask it about me and then we'll okay. see. And then I can't turn around and I'll just have to answer. <laughs> um, so do you, do you want to have like an optimal situation for writing like you have the red typewriter and the red that thing has a timer or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the fruit is there. Okay, so it's like still life. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So you know, like somebody came, one of, one of these ladies came, and they set out this stuff, and I'm like, that's interesting. You know, like, do I like, do I need to like set up my perfect environment right, to right, right. or, or, I mean, like, do you know yourself to do that, or somebody else decide? Right. No, I, I love your question. What's your name? Sokora. That's a really great question. This whole look of this thing is a sort of, it's been evolving, because I've been doing this show for many years now. It's sort of evolving. So, so the red typewriter, and then I got this red timer to match, and then, and then and Lynn, when she comes, she brings food, because it's kind of not a joke, and, and she also brings me these lotto tickets here, so it's kind of like, it's, it's like an extended, joke kind of this I miss is because it's a play and it is and I walk around and all this thing stuff going on and it somehow matches this decor that they refurbished the lobby with but it didn't before when we did it in the corner over there it was anyway can you, can you repeat the question oh I'm so sorry right thank you so Sukuno asks like is this like should we strive for the perfect setup for our writing you know, because this is a perfect setup with the typewriter and the timer and the still life and whatnot. Or should we just, like, by any means necessary? By any means necessary, right? So if you've got, like, some time on the bus when you're going to work or whatever, and you only got your, your, your notebook and you can only write longhand, then boom, there it is, you know what I mean? I, I, have a, I have a yoga practice, which is like my writing practice. And I used to do two hours of yoga every day. But now my son, he has a different school schedule. So now I do 20 minutes while he's watching. And that's my yoga practice. That's all I got. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's got to work, right? So we take what works. If you've got like five hours a day, great. And you, you want to spend it doing your writing, great. You know what I mean? But if you've only got an hour after your kids go to sleep or before you got to go to work or on your lunch time or in the car or, you know in the, some people sit in the garage and they write they have garages they have cars this life where they have these things you know, you know what I'm talking about so you want to you want to find the time you know maybe it means like that you don't watch your favorite television show or your favorite show online you know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe it means that you don't, whatever, you know, that little thing that you don't have to do, you know? Um, but you, I know that we all have the time to get our work done. I just know that. It might not be an hour. That's why we do 20 minutes. It might just be 20 minutes. And if 20 minutes a day is all you've got, maybe that's all you need. And that's okay. And you'll still get your work done. I get a lot of work done just like one hour I sit and I work. I focus really hard. And I do it five days a week. I can't do it on the weekends because my son, I have my son all day. I can't work on the weekends anymore. I used to work all the time. I can't work on the weekends anymore. Because I have to hang out with my kids. You have two full-time jobs. I, I do have two full-time and, and five brains. No, really, two, yeah, you're right, two full-time jobs. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, I have also, I have one full-time job and then the writing is like a side thing. Right. But I, I'm a teacher of three-year-olds. Oh, wow. So, so you teach the three-year-olds? Yes. Look, wait, wait till I see my son. I know. Bring, oh, I saw him. Oh, you saw him? Yeah. Okay. He was oh, looking at me. I was looking at him. Yeah. Oh, you guys made that a connection. Yeah. Yo. Uh, they wow. smoke it on me. Yeah, <laughs> they smoke it. <laughs> but see, yes, yeah, so you've got to really find your time. And if you look at your day carefully, Sakura, you can find that time. And it only has to be like 15 minutes. That's all you need. And I don't know where it is in your day, because you know you got your own specific day. But I know you can find the time. And if you just commit to it every day or five days a week, you know. And just do it. And just see if you can make that commitment to yourself. I mean, that's the tricky thing. Because a lot of times we make 
you know, we always are in service of other people. We're always out there, present for other people, helping people, or doing things. And we kind of feel weird about making that commitment to ourselves, you know? But that's the kind of belief in yourself that it takes. And so you came here, so I complete faith in you. Come and let me cheer you on. I love it. I interviewed him um, in 2005, you know this story, I've told you this story before. Um, American Theater Magazine uh, said, do you want to interview August Wilson? I said, sure, that'd be great. And I did all my research and everything, and then about an hour before the interview, they called him and said, oh, she's got to tell you, you know, August, he's, he's not feeling too well. So, you know, I said, oh, cool, cool, I'll, you know, I'll be cool, I'll, you know. I won't talk to him too much or whatever. <laughs> and they said, no, 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 you don't understand, he's dying. And I said, this is an hour before the interview. And I, I, I had to go through it, I had to interview him. And I, I think I remember crying through the whole interview. And he was just cool and loving and kind and supportive. And I was just like, I don't care, I don't know how it made any sense at all. But, and that was apparently, that was the last interview he gave. He wanted it to be the last interview, I didn't know. I just thought, <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah, anyway. So, um, anything else? That is, that is the question you have to ask. So where am I going to put my faith? And it's hard. It's really, really hard. You know, even if you have friends and you win awards and people give you money and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't necessarily make it any easier somehow. Because you still have to come to terms with that strange thing, writing. You know. And what happens if you don't have faith in yourself? And what happens if you don't have faith in yourself? Then you, what you do is you, I think the best thing to do when you're feeling lowly, I think, is to either, you know, I mean, you, we each have our things. I would suggest not uh, crack or <laughs> drink. You know, I'm just saying, some people don't have faith in themselves and they go smoke crack. I'm just saying, people do that. I'm suggesting that you don't do that. <laughs> but I'm suggesting that we, I mean, some people buy lots of shoes. I'm suggesting not that either, okay? But I do think it's good to come or, um, be around people who can restore you and, and, and remind you of who you are. Yeah, I meant faith in your writing. Well, well, what do you mean? Faith in your writing. And we come, we, some people smoke crack when they're not faith in your writing. And some people will gather together with people who can restore them. The same thing, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I mean, they remind us of that our writing is, is worth it. You know, that's what I mean. That's why I, 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 you know, they remind us that keep going, they say. Keep going. Cheer you on, we'll cheer you on. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what we do. I think that's really the best thing to do. Um, to, you know, Sometimes giving people pages and hoping that they're going to like the pages is, is dicey because they might not, you know. But if you can just get around people who are going to cheer you on and say, keep going, take another step, take one more step, I think there's, there's value in that. That's what I do, um, you know. So, 
Yeah, I think it's harder to kind of sit at home alone and kind of try to get the feeling back, you know what I mean? But also putting the time in, also because your writing is a resource, so it's, it's a well for you to reach into and to find that uh, thing that makes it worthwhile. That experience at George Carroll's, it is that? It is that, yeah, it is that. It is that experience. Sometimes when my soul is as thin as a playing card, I write and the act of writing uh, changes everything. Yeah. And it has that funny little line after the, the act of writing changes everything or seems to. <laughs> Which is like so great. Yeah. Which is so great. Are we good? Any more questions? Very beautiful to ask. Beautiful questions, yeah. Do you have a question? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily a question, um, but when I write, I find myself editing while I write. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I'm trying to stop myself from doing that, and it just disrupts everything. So um, I guess what are some suggestions for me to kind of combat that? That's great. What's your name? Sheena. Sheena? Yes. Sheena. So Sheena edits while she writes. It's a great question. It's a question that we all have and we continue to have. How do I stop doing this thing that I'm doing and it's not helpful? So how do we stop editing while we write? Um, how do you write? Do you write in a notebook or is it on your computer? I write in my notebook first and then like once I kind of get the juice flowing, then I'm like, cool, and I go up to my laptop or my iPad or whatever. And what does the editing while you write look like? What do you do? You, you curse back up and, and then you it's, it's literally like, I'm like, for instance, so-and-so is saying this, and then it's like, wait, maybe I should use a different word, and then it just disrupts everything. So so-and-so is saying this, go ahead. Like, for instance, um, you know, I'll write a character, um, a dialogue for a character, and um, they're having a sentence say something, and I'm like, wait, maybe I should use a different word to kind of convey what I'm feeling, and then it just completely ruins everything, and I can't really get back on track, and I find myself doing it a lot. Right. Right. Huh. So there's, okay. So what we, what you can try, so, th and so this isn't why you're writing in your notebook. This is when you've got the juices flowing and you're typing. It's both. It's both. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to try doing, what I don't want you to know, I don't want you to try, I want you to do, what I want you to do is when you're writing with your notebook, okay, I want you to write for smaller increments of time. Like how long, when you sit down and write about how long do you write for? 10, 15 minutes. Okay, okay, and then you get your juices flowing, and you like you stop. What what happens? And then like you're done for the day if you're writing. Um, what happens is that like I won't necessarily stop. I'm like, all right, cool. I get my iPad out and just finish writing. Right. So, but your entire writing time, about how long is that? Maybe like. It really depends on the day. Sometimes sure. it's a half an hour. I would okay. estimate around 45 minutes. Okay, so your, your writing time is about 45 minutes. Okay, what I want you to do is try 20 minutes. Okay, and this is what I want you to try. For 20 minutes, I want you to just go forward. Okay? Stop. The timer's going to go off. <laughs> okay? And then... If you transfer it to your iPad or whatever, right? For 20 minutes, set the timer again, just go forward. If you're copying, just copy forward. It's a discipline. You know, all those stories in mythology, like, don't look back. Lot and his wife, you know, and then Medusa, and you know, they had to look at her in a mirror, and a thing, you know, all the stories, right? Just stop doing it. Just gonna ask you just and but, but I want you to shorten your time, okay? So if you how about just 15 minutes? Just go forward. Just keep going forward. And if you find yourself going, maybe I thought Susan Larry Fox says, just go forward. Just keep going forward. Okay? Okay. Just try that. Just try doing that. All right. Okay? And it's great to know that you I'm doing something that I hate doing and I want to change it. Okay? But it's really hard to do those two things at once. Yeah. It makes it really hard. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So just... Ain't, ain't, what's the song? Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. You heard it. <laughs> so that's where we're going to end. We're going to end talking about the movement. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. You guys are great.